folks, I'm Sherry Martin. Welcome to Harris Acres and Heart of the Home. I'm lucky, I got Melton Campbell and Matt Dobler to come back. I didn't scare you off with a bunch of desserts. I sugared you up a lot oh, though, didn't I? Woo! Delicious. Lots of good desserts and lots of sugar. Now, it's almost Valentine's Day and you have a young wife, you have a young wife, and you have to impress those wives. What you gonna do to impress them? I don't know, I might get her a nice tennis bracelet. Oh, that would be good. I'm gonna what be you gonna, me. You're gonna be, oh. <laughs> you're gonna set impressive. That's so. right, that's right. That's that ain't right. impressive that's right. Well, Mama Lucy's in the kitchen <laughs> cooking a recipe that I promise you both of you can do because anybody can deep fry. Now, I don't fry much. I'm just not much of a fry cook. But Mama Lucy has this recipe. She's frying Cornish hen for us and gonna stuff it in some rice that has some strange ingredients. But you're from middle Georgia, mm -hmm. not too far from where Vidalia onions grow. We have a jelly that we, it has Vidalia onion in it and balsamic vinegar. Right. And it comes from a shop up in L.J. Georgia, Travers General Store. We're gonna try this. We just, um, the owner of one of the restaurants up there gave us this Cornish hen recipe. Mm -hmm. Her brother makes this other product and we thought we'll go for it. Now, if y'all don't like it, we won't cook it for your wives <laughs> because we don't want your wives to leave mad and pouty. No, but, no, no. but Cornish hen deep fried, it only takes about 15 minutes. So that's pretty easy. But we were talking about when we tested them, they need a little bit of kick to it. What would you inject Something in it? Hot I, sauce? You could inject just about anything in it. They've got uh, the, uh, the Cajun sauce that I've injected into turkeys. Mm -hmm. They've got different types of things you can right. inject inside right. of them. And the neat thing about this is you can thaw it out in the morning. You can right. come home and literally in 15 minutes right. because you can use, don't tell anybody, that you can use the quick and easy rice. But then you can add some spices to it and right. add a can of soup mix. You can use either golden or cream of mushroom. Mm -hmm. And it's so simple. And you know, you can impress somebody because 15 minutes in a deep fryer, that's not hard. Mm -mm. And then we're gonna glaze it with um, Trevor's what do you call this? I guess it's a jelly and a jam that has the balsamic vinegar and the Vidalia onions, okay. and we've mixed it with his peach and pecan jelly and just made a glaze. Mm. So we're gonna test it. And we'll try it, and if nobody here dies today, <laughs> then we'll feed your wives. <laughs> we'll feed your wives. So, Paulette yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It. Now Paulette isn't an adventurous eater, is she? Uh, she's become more adventurous. I mean, she has as far as she's trying more and more, she, she has come out of that shell a little bit. So she's, she's trying more and more foods and, and enjoying them, but uh, this well, will be interesting. As long as I don't tell her I did it, you she'll did. be all right. <laughs> when J.S. and I got married, he did not eat soup beans and he didn't eat sweet potatoes. He was raised in the country. I was raised in the city. I couldn't wait to get up here and eat soup beans and, mm -hmm. and sweet potatoes. The man didn't eat them and I just thought that was crazy. But he would leave Jasper and drive to Ponce de Leon to a little Greek restaurant and take me to eat because I love this food. And then he was adventurous, which surprised me because he was raised here right at Harris Acres and his mom was a very, very country cook, an awesome cook, but very plain, very simple. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't eat potatoes unless he watched you make them because he didn't trust instant potatoes. And he had seen restaurants use instant potatoes. Never an instant potatoes ever been cooked in my house. And there are so many quick and easy recipes with potatoes. But he was funny because um, I taught him to eat chopped liver. Have you ever eaten chopped liver? Mm. Well, I, don't do liver. I went to a Jewish high school and we did chopped liver and it had mm. little bitty fine onions and boiled eggs and you use a little bit of the um, broth from that. And I made this pate and put it on crackers and I thought, now, he's gonna slap me when I serve that. He loved it. Mm. <laughs> I thought, you're kidding me. So it's funny how you get away from what you're used to. Right. His mom cooked soup beans all the time. Right. He wouldn't touch them. And she cooked sweet potatoes all the time. He wouldn't touch them and I loved them. So it's funny. You just kind of, uh, you learn to adjust. And, and Cornish hens, when I first got married, I could cook two things, meatloaf, Cecil, Cornish hen, Herman. So he'd call and say, <laughs> are we having Cecil or Herman for supper? <laughs> and I said, that is not funny. He said, you're right, you should learn to cook. <laughs> so, now, can Christy cook? Very good, she's a very good cook. And can Paulette cook? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cook. I mean, I think she can cook. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Christy's not, Christy's not as much of your of your traditional type food. She likes, like, we eat a lot of, we, she likes Italian. Mm, oh, we me eat too. Mexican food. Me too. She, Italian's her favorite. She loves mm -hmm. any type of pasta and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But we, we, she's, she can cook, 
just about anything she wants to cook, and she gets a lot of help from my mom. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she has yeah. some big shoes to fill because I told oh, her I yeah. said, "Now my mom can cook: turnip oh, yeah. greens, cornbread, oh, yeah. black eyed peas." Yeah. Well, does your mom make white or brown gravy with biscuits? Uh, my mom never made a whole lot of biscuits. She did. She'd make really? uh, cornbread and. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Rick, she done a well, whole see, lot of I biscuits. made 24 biscuits every morning with white gravy. Right. And when our oldest son got married, his wife made brown gravy. Mm -hmm. And he came home and he said, huh, she's got to learn to make white gravy. How do you make white <laughs> gravy? And so I showed him, you know. And he said, I, I don't know why it's brown. And I said, well, a lot of people eat brown gravy. Right. But the Cornish hens, I haven't cooked them in years because I remembered those phone calls. Right. Are we having Cecil or Herman tonight? <laughs> and to be honest with you, I got tired of hearing that. And I did learn to cook some other things. Right. But I was a little bit nervous about it because I also had a mother-in-law that was an awesome cook. Right. And you kind of have big shoes to fill. Right. And, and that was, she makes a stack cake. And I actually, she's 93 years old. And I went out to talk to her a couple of weeks ago, and I said, Ma, I need you to make me this cake. And she said, No, honey, I can't. My arthritis is bad, and I can't. But I'll give you the recipe. I said, Ma, I don't want to make the cake. I want you to make the cake. So she mailed me the recipe with um, a little note that said, You can do this. But hers is with dried apples. Mm -hmm. And she told me she got this recipe off of a white lily flower bag in 1940-something. Mm, wow. So, and it's one of those things... Um, I married a man who was very opposite from me. Now, you married somebody who's very like you, and you married somebody who's very like you. You're bubbly. Right. And Christy's very bubbly, right. isn't she? And Paulette's a little reserved, and you're a little reserved. I haven't been called that much. <laughs> you are a little reserved. I would say uh, Melton's the clown, and I would say on the bus, Melton well, is trouble. Uh, you put us two together, and we're trouble. Trouble, yeah. uh-oh, uh -oh. It's kind of like the Abbott and Costello kind of thing. You know, we feed off yeah, each other. Man, that's <laughs> the well, truth. And that's good. Well, yeah, you have to do something to keep your sanity on there. That's right. You have that's to right. laugh to keep from crying. That's so. right. For sure. And, and when y'all drive, now you do two-hour shifts? Is that what two you do? Two-hour shifts on the bus, right. How do you regulate yourself to sleep? You don't. You don't, really. I mean, See, you, I don't know how you could do that. A lot, of, a lot of people can't even... I've talked to other people in other groups. They can't even sleep while the bus is moving, so I they can't. just drive. I can't. So, but you have to get used to moving because yeah. we, we travel so many miles from right. one one thing into the next thing, and you've got to know how to either you mm -hmm. sleep or you're just exhausted. And do y'all everybody drives? Pretty much. Well, there's one or two of them. Yeah, know. there's one or two. A couple of them that you don't want them to be driving. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be in the bed while they're driving. Some that are driving, you don't know if you want them to drive either. So. That's right. But you know, it's funny. They say that because you can actually lay in your bed and you can tell who's driving. You really? know who's driving oh, yeah. by the way the yeah. bus is being yeah. handled. Yeah. You know, so yeah. we won't get into all that. But I mean, <laughs> uh, it's interesting. But it's, it's kind of funny that some of those that want to tell everybody else how to drive. Can't drive. No, wait, wait. wait. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Me and Matt are the only two guys on the bus that have CDO license. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Me and so Matt. Right. So we know somebody said y'all could drive. Right. Yeah. Well, That's right. Well, yeah. and we are the only two on the bus. We get... We get made fun of a lot by, you know, saying stuff the way we do, handling the bus or whatever. But you go ask any of them, who has put any dents and scratches on the bus? It ain't Not been you me or him. Not boys. Uh-uh. No. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. No, you, the rest of them have. Yeah. Every one of them have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, y'all, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, I think Mama Lucy's almost got your Valentine meal. We're going to mm -hmm. test it, and we're going to see if you think you can pull this off for your wives. I think you can. And if it's not fit to eat, we're not going to tell Mama Lucy because she's a little touchy. Oh. She's a little touchy. Y'all hang around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, folks. Welcome back to Heart of the Home. It's almost Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And while we've been chatting and just visiting and being lazy, because y'all deserve it, and I know I deserve oh, a break. Yeah. Oh, I deserve a break today. Mama Lucy and Mama Marie have made us a wonderful salad and the Cornish hen that yep. you're going to go home and duplicate for your wives. Right? Yeah. If it's fit to eat. Now, right. this is an experiment. We're going to try it. Oh, Come on, Mama good. Lucy. Let's right. see how no, this already. looks. It sounded awesome. Um, it looks good. It, it looks, looks good. good. Uh -huh. Now, are we going to name this Cecil? Oh, good. <laughs> little Cornish hens. Now, that's an elegant looking meal, isn't it? What does that look good? A little stuffed chicken. Oh, I think one of them's crippled. <laughs> 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 Matt, will you take that bone yes, from Mama uh, Marie? There I you will. go. There you go. Now, are we going to just serve the whole chicken? Let's see how this looks. Now, remember, she gets her feelings hurt easy. We Let's hope it's going to be good. Yeah. Let's serve the other one. Right. Okay, and this that is hot. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> we've got a crippled Don't chicken. Don't serve a broke leg chicken. That's right. Don't, and this was deep fried and only took 15 right. minutes? 
Right. <gasps> uh oh, boys. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. And this is mint from my yard, oh, isn't it? Is. Or kudzu. It's it's mint. Is that mint or kudzu? It's poison oak. <laughs> okay, Melton. Matt, hand me your plate, sweetie. Okay. It's hot, I can tell you that. And we did you use the glaze from Trevor's yes. General Store. Yes. And we mixed the one with peach and pecans and then the Vidalia and the balsamic vinegar. There you go. Now, you want to get them a plate to fix a salad? Mm. Well, I just thought they could put it right Put it on the side. side. Mm. Right. Okay. That, that way I get to hug him. Lucy's boss. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lucy's boss. Now, that does have a little bit of a vinegar taste. Mm -hmm. See you later, boy. Okay. It's kind of like Thank a... You. Well, wait, well, you were leaving before we take a bite. What yeah. is that oh, supposed yeah. to be? Well, because I'm uh -uh. afraid you might not like it. <laughs> I'm more like it. Y'all taste this. It has a little bit of a vinegar tang. Let's see how this is going to be. Have you taken a bite yet? And it's deep fried. No, I'm still alive. Yep, let's see. Hey, and it only took 15 minutes. Where did Lucy go? Where's She's Lucy? not watching, is she? No. Okay. <laughs> is it done? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good that it gets done in 15 minutes, isn't mm -hmm. it? Y'all are using your forks, mm. and I don't mm. do that. Mm. Y'all are being all proper and stuff, so I guess I'll have to use nah. my fork. Mm. So. That's amazing that you can cook a chicken in 15 minutes, mm -hmm. the whole little boy. I can, I can eat it in less than 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you find these on sale. <laughs> and, and this is cheaper than taking your wife out to dinner. I oh. think we got these two for six ninety nine. That's mm -hmm. not bad at all. Don't tell her. Have you ever taken her anywhere you could feed her for four dollars? I don't think so. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> McDonald's, Making maybe. a mess. <laughs> crystals? Mm-hmm. I'll go get her a crystal. Or the Wendy's bargain menu, yeah. I'm just going to have Lucy come over and cook, and then tell her to go That's home. That's what we can do. Some. That stuff is only right. that onion. It's got a good, That's very good. Good, good flavor. Paint. Yeah, it's a little bit sweet, a little bit tangy with the vinegar. Mm, it's good, though. And, uh, yeah, and it looks like it has some berries in it, too. Maybe some, I don't know if that's craisins or what it is. It has some pecans in it. That's where she dropped it in the floor. Mm. Oh, no, I'm just Did kidding. Did the three-second rule apply? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's been fun having you here. You know I love you both. I love you because you have eyes just like mine. And I love you because you're just so precious and so special. Oh, thank you. She loves all of me. She just likes your eyes. You've got brown eyes like my mama. And sometimes I would tell mama that she was just full of it. So. Oh, really? Oh, man. So you're full of it. Oh, all right, whatever. You're but you're not full much. of yourself. No. No, no. You have a wonderful, you have a great personality. And, and it shows. It shows. We used to say that about ugly people. <laughs> they got uh -oh. great personality. Uh -oh. They've got a good, good personality. They're ugly, but they got a good personality. Now, oh, you whatever. know, folks can see you every week because they can come to church and see you. That's right. And they can see you every week because they can follow you on your singing career. Right. You know what? Laughter uh -huh. is music for the soul, isn't That's it? That's right. Laughter is music for the soul. And they can make you laugh. Mm -hmm. They've made me laugh. They've made me smile a lot. You brought me through some really tough times. I Thank you so much. Time. Well, the Bible you. says it doeth good like a medicine. That's and exactly I, right. That was my mother's favorite saying. Sometimes yeah. I, we overdose, so that's all right. Yeah, that's okay. We'll be back into your home. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Rita Pierce, home of the Diplomats, and it's been a great day here at the heart of the home with Miss Sherry. It's just been wonderful. And I love Southern gospel music, and so I want you to sit back, enjoy, and listen to this song. Look up, fear not, the angels say, Behold, Messiah has come, the one of whom we pray. And as he spoke to men that day, the heavenly host around the throne joined in to say, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and good will be made. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. Born to see the world of sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord. Amen. And still today the wise men come, offering their praise to God's anointed one. And as they speak, their heart felt love. This glorious sound falls on my ear from the Peace on earth and good will to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy. He was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory. Hallelujah to the Lord, amen. 
Sing low in the night in the highest blue So hey, it's a good way to bed If I ain't just a sing in the Bible Sing glory, 